So I've got this concept I want to share with you. It's called the mirror mask, okay? And the mirror mask works something like this. We all walk around with a mask that we think is a mirror and it reflects the world. And we have a conflated vision of who we are. We think we're better looking, we think we're taller, skinnier, smarter, and all these kinds of things. And so we try to hold this mask up in the world and we move about it. And as you know, if you have to hold on to something, it takes a lot of your energy. So when you walk into a room, and as I did, judging a show for broadcast designers, which I didn't think of myself as one, I kept thinking, do they know I don't do this? Will they discover me? Will, will somebody just say, hey, what is that fraud, that imposter doing here amongst us? Who let this interloper in? And so my confidence was like really low. And I'm walking into this really swanky club and everybody knows everybody else. And I'm sitting here thinking, I don't know anybody. I'm just gonna stand at the bar like a doofus and order a salsa water. And I was working through that whole thing. And even after having worked and running my company for 10 years, having won a ton of awards, I just felt like I didn't belong. So this mirror mask is something we all carry around. And it takes a lot of effort to hold on to. And what we realize is the world already sees you exactly for who you are. So there's this whole thing, right? We're just trying to hold this thing up, this image, this, this thing that consumes a lot of our energy. And it wasn't until I figured this thing out that everybody already sees you for exactly who you are and they can choose to accept you or reject you. And there's really not a lot that you can do. It could be an in-law, it could be the, the, the love interest of your life that just can't pay you any attention. And we just have to be okay with that. And I'll give you a story and I'll make it really personal. As I was doing YouTube videos, I was very reluctant to do them. I was dragged into it, believe it or not. Now we're 500 videos later, but the first 10 were not so easy for me. And my friend, Jose Caballer, who some of you guys know, he's an extrovert. He calls himself obnoxious, and he is the most extroverted person I know. He could literally walk into a room full of strangers and eat the food off your plate, not even ask you if that's okay. That's my friend, Jose. So he's like, Chris, let's make videos together. I don't want to say, he's like, you don't have to do anything. I don't want to be on camera. Don't worry, you just stand there. So for the first three episodes, I sat in the chair next to him. My jaw was clenched tight. And I was like, what words do I say? Because I was thinking, I don't want to say the wrong things. I have clients that I don't want to set off. What do I review? What do I do? Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I'd go home every night and my jaw was sore from the next day. I'm like, I couldn't figure it out because I was clenched so tight. And the team is editing the videos. And the few parts that I did say, I just hated the sound of my own voice. You guys know that feeling? You ever heard yourself? Like nobody sounds worse than you than you. It's kind of weird. And I, I, I was such a freak about it because I'd walk around the office and if it was playing on somebody's computer, naturally they're getting paid to edit the video. I'd hear, I'm like, shut it down, turn it off. Every time you see me, and I made it a law, like every time you see me walk by within eight feet, I need you to stop editing. Stop editing because I can't handle it. Right? And I was just thinking about that thought. It's like, what is wrong with me? And the thought I had was, I thought I sounded cooler than that. I thought I looked better than that. And I would ask my wife, like, do I look like that? She said, yeah. Do I, do I sound like that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't trust you. Boys, come around. Dad needs to ask you a really important question. I need to play this video for you. Tell me the truth. The kids will never lie to you. <laughs> Do I sound like that? Like, yep, and went back to playing video games. <laughs> so I had to kind of wrestle with that and just reconcile that I do sound terrible, but I already sound terrible to everybody and they're still okay with that. And so this is kind of me going on my path of accepting myself fully and 100%. And this is where you really get self-confidence from. Standing in front of you guys, standing in front of hundreds of you guys or thousands sometimes, is a thing that will attack all creative people, actually just people in general. And there's a thing that my wife shared a video with me. Uh, I think it was some kind of like Zen master and he was talking to this group. He was standing there, he's all smiles, you know? And he says, you guys, uh, how can I be comfortable standing here and, and to talk in front of you? My English isn't good. I don't know these things, I don't know you. But here's the thing. I'm actively standing here thinking right now, I wish you all well. He's looking at each person in his mind. I wish you well, I wish I can help you. And so what he did was he killed his own ego. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about being the star up on, on stage and saying things and being really smart or having wonderful, charming stories to share with everybody. It was really, he just wanted to help people. So every time I sit there and think, mm, you're getting in your head again, there's that ego coming up. 
just kill it and just be of service to people. And this is one of the most empowering things that I can tell you. So I walk into rooms much scarier than the one I'm looking at right now. Mostly of single, not single, straight, white, older men who generally are Christian, sitting in the room, making really big decisions and writing really big paychecks. And I have to be able to be comfortable around them. So my whole thing going into these rooms, the way I disarm myself is like, I'm here, I'll try to help. I don't know any more than any of you. And if I could be of service, let's do this. This gets me out of this mindset of selling, of proving myself, of trying to sound smarter than I am. And then they walk away and they're like, Chris, you're so confident. I'm like, really? I was just here to be for you. So this thing, if we can just turn this energy away and for, forget that there's a mask because there really isn't, people already see you and either have made the decision to accept you or not to accept you. And there's nothing you can do about it. So ditch the mirror mask, okay?